Hello, everyone. Um, I'm here today with Alex, who has been on two uh, different experiences with Summer Abroad. And today we're going to talk about uh, both of them. So hi, uh, thank you for being here with me, Alex. Hi. Um, so uh, I'm a U of T alumni uh, from uh, the class of 2020. And I um, had the, the fortune of taking both um, CRI 389 in 2016, as well as PSY uh, 306 in uh, this year, I found both experiences fantastic. And in terms of CRI 398, you took that at Oxford. Would you mind going over a little bit about what the course was about? It was a, a criminology course that compared the legal systems of Canada and the UK to each other with a bit of American thrown in there as well. And it looked at sort of the, the origins of the criminal legal code, like the history in both England as well as Canada. Um, and it had a lot of field trips in old English courthouses, prison at one point, and we really got the sense of how um, the Canadian criminal code really has its origins in England. And speaking about uh, the actual location, how do you think that studying in Oxford, England specifically, influenced uh, the course and, and, and taking like, the criminology course? There, there's a there's a sense of like when you're in lecture and you're listening to the professor describe sort of what the experience was like 150, 200 years ago. The professor's words can only go so far. Um, being in that environment and especially if there's a tour guide or someone guiding you through the process of what the lived experience was, um, that really uh, added. Um, a lot of color, um, you could sort of see the, the historical similarities and differences on where the Canadian system is today versus where the English system was 200 years ago and how much philosophically changed between uh, then and now. Yeah, that's, that sounds like an incredible opportunity for you. And, and just to further expand on the specific excursions you went on, you mentioned a prison and the system. How do you think that the field trips influenced your understanding of the course content? And how is it different from, let's say, taking a course back at UFT? The course focused on um, themes of surveillance and what was called back then um, deviance or deviant behaviors like what we now view as um, mental conditions. And what I found in like basically all of the locations that visited on the course was the, the, the notion of what a like a, a good person and a bad person was changed dramatically. Seeing those locations firsthand, you get the sense of how um, difficult it must have been for people in that system um, and how misunderstood they, they, would, uh, they, they felt. And we would reflect back on um, the locations we visited and our understanding of, of what we view as like unacceptable behavior in society has radically transformed. And it's one thing for a professor to say, it has radically transformed. And it's another thing to see like the 300, sometimes even 400 year old spot where someone was very graphically held. The places we visited were not welcoming. They weren't like kind, but to get that context of being in that room and having someone describe to you the experience of someone from that time period really shaped like the importance of the progress that was made in the legal field over that time. That does sound incredibly impactful. Do you remember any of the people you met there or uh, where you stayed or how was the accommodation and student life experience affected by going to Oxford in 2016? So, some of the, the people I've, I've met, it was a little while ago now, but a couple people stick out in my mind. Um, there was one uh, tour guide at one of these one of these prisons we visited that played the role of someone being shipped from the UK to Australia, 
and her describing like the experience. The people at the places we visited were so invested in in carrying through that mental imagery that really stuck with me. People that you meet and the the like experts that you meet on the field trips will stick with you. Uh, in terms of student life and the people I met, there is a student pub on the um, Worcester College campus where I was staying, and there were Oxford students there on our karaoke nights, and we would get to speak with them and do the the cultural exchange of like, what is it like being a student in England, and what is it like being a student in Canada? If I remember correctly, we had class four days of the week and then three days where if there were no field trips planned, we could go and explore outside of Oxford. A lot of the the most memorable people from my experience in Oxford were both on the trips planned as well as like the little moments, the random moments of like you're sitting on the on the London tube and you get into a conversation with a stranger right? About like fairly mundane things that really like help you understand the wider culture that you're in. And one last Mm -hmm. thing about the specific experience at Oxford in 2016. Um, What advice would you have for someone who's considering specifically an in-person experience? The the in-person experience, it adds to the course content in that many courses during uh, a student's like time at U of T the, the course content will eventually fade unless you're constantly rehearsing it in later courses, it will eventually fade. But like these experiences, like I can still picture the, the way the rooms looked on some of these field trips. A- anyone considering doing it in person um, really should take advantage of, of being in that space and going to see as much as possible. And so then jumping forward, uh, you also took another course, the uh, PSY 306, uh, which is Topics in Psychology, Disability, Culture, and Inclusion. Would you mind describing a little bit about what that particular course was about? Recently at the start of like the the pandemic, took a step back and reflected on what I found uh, important to my life as well as academics. And I realized that I really wanted to know more about disability culture, because that is something that I want to take forward uh, in my academic or non-academic career. In terms of the course content, um, it I, I love the course. It, it was fantastic. It, the professor explored the the lived experience at different life stages of a person with a disability and how um, com- comparing the medical and social models of how society treats people with disabilities, as well as baking in 10 or 11 international guest speakers from all over the world. So even though it was virtually in England, we got experiences from Japan and from Afghanistan, I believe, and the United States and Israel as well, um, and, and England as well. For me personally, it was both understanding the different themes that each of the guest speakers brought to the table in terms of like technology and imagery and history and education, as well as how different cultures view what it means to have a disability and how different societies view what is important to to prioritize when helping people with disabilities live their lives to the fullest. So I would say the course was very comprehensive. I feel like the online course was what it could not deliver in terms of in-person experiences. It made up for like exponentially in terms of the in-depth nature of, of how it went into the content. I feel like I really came away with a, a firm grasp of some of the issues that the wider uh, topic has in store. And I feel like I'm well prepped for taking that forward in my academic career. Um, and if you're looking to like deepen 
your understanding of specific topics. The online course like does not disappoint. You touched on uh, the international experience that was offered through the guest speakers, but how do you feel that uh, the professor was able to incorporate specifically the England element? Because it was an Oxford professor, it was a course that was centered around England. How did the professor incorporate that, you know, maintaining that international experience whilst doing it virtually? The speaker on deaf culture really focused on English media and how that moved throughout history, talking about like Princess Diana and how active she was with the deaf community and English subtitles and that being integrated with um, television. And because of the guest speaker's age, they were able to speak about like when they were a kid, not having subtitles on English television. And then as they grew into an adult and eventually a professor in linguistics, seeing the integration of accessibility in their day-to-day life, while also like commenting on the, the shortcomings that still remain. It felt like we were still getting the, the field trip component of, of the experience while also getting a sense for, in, in the case of this course, how disability has changed in England. All right, well, with that, I just have one final question. What is one thing that you would tell a student who is on the fence about participating in summer abroad, whether that be virtual or in person? So I think both experiences in person and online, for, for me, they complement each other very well. I would recommend both. Thank you so much for being here, Alex. I know that everyone uh, back at home watching sincerely appreciates you talking about your experience. And I hope that all of you do take the time to consider applying, whether that be to Oxford or to any of the programs offered at Summer Abroad. Because like Alex said, uh, it's one of the most incredible and diverse experiences that you can have at UFT and beyond.